Hey everybody, welcome back to Trollcast. I'm Jake, and with me as always, the Stream King, the Far Cry Guy, the Deadpan Man, the Star Wars Big Boy himself, Steven, is here with me as well. Say hey, Steven. Hey, we need to add a D- we need to add a DJ name to for me got because some funky headphones on tonight. Yeah, you can't see me right now because your video's on, but mine isn't because of my setup. But I forgot my earbuds that have the built-in mic uh, back at my church when I because I just came back from work, and so I was like, oh, headphone, headphone, headphones, and then it, these were the only ones I could find. <laughs> so it's just these big Sony goofy headphones that you get for fifteen dollars at Walmart. So. Hey guys, you know, I'm here. Whatever gets the job done, man. Whatever makes it happen. That's what we're all about here at Chortle Games. We're about making it happen, okay? We're gonna do what we gotta do to make it work. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> if you're new to the show, this is Chortle Cast, the official podcast of Chortle Games, where we talk about TV shows, movies, video games, anime, mostly video games. Today, actually, though, we've got a pretty decent mix. Uh, of movies and games and all yeah. sorts of good stuff. But uh, anyway, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, you could be a part of the show by writing in at chortlecast at gmail.com. Uh, you can send us stories you'd like to hear us cover. Uh, you can send us topics you'd like to hear us discuss. Um, you can also do that in our Discord, uh, which you can find in the description of this video or in this podcast. Uh, and yeah, so we want you to be a part. Do that. We, uh, we will cover those things. So we appreciate you guys. And uh, Stephen, thank you for being a part. As always, I like that we can just do this. You know, like I'm I'm over here in New Jersey this week. I was in Virginia last New Jersey. week. Jersey. <laughs> I uh, I tried my accent on. Uh, I tried the oh, skepti- skeptical New Yorker accent on somebody. <laughs> Didn't get a great response, but you know it, hey, it happens. Yeah, I guess only I can do it right. Either that I, or everyone that, responds. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that answer. Uh, okay. Nintendo. So we went to New York last night, uh, and. Um, we ate at this place by Chloe, which uh, my coworker is vegan. Uh, so this is an all-vegan restaurant. So I ate there. It was pretty good, not going to lie. But the reason we went there was because it was right next to the Nintendo store. And I was mm. like, heck yes, boys. I'm going to go to the Nintendo store in New York City. It's going to be great. I'm going to have a great time. They were closed. <laughs> we oh, got, no. I know. I know. We got in. So we got there. Probably at 8 o'clock. Like, we were in New York at 8 o'clock. Like, we were walking across Times Square probably at 8 o'clock. And so we were just marveling at Times Square. And then we were like, all right, let's eat. Because really all we wanted to do was just, like, walk into Times Square. And just kind of walk around and be like, we're in New York. Cool. Let's go home. Like, that's all we really cared to do. Uh, So we were like, let's find somewhere to eat. We ate. And we saw that the Nintendo store was there. And was like, that's what I want to do. They close at 8. So like, if we had <laughs> if we had planned that out, we might could have made it in the door, but we we didn't plan out that well. So I did not get to go to the Nintendo store. I didn't even get to go to the Lego store, Stephen. It was all closed because New York is the Man. city that never sleeps unless except you sell when it does. Toys because <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, Man, we your gone, trip has been a waste. Then to, I know, right? We could have gone to a place called Platinum Dolls. Uh, and I'll just let you take a guess at what that was, but I wasn't really interested. So guns. Yeah. How did you know? That's amazing. Man. Thanks. The name's really misleading, but you yeah. know I'm impressed. Uh, but anyway, you. that's not what we're here to talk about. Uh, no. We are here to talk about video games and the news of the week in all pop culture references. Uh, Stephen, first, what we always do at the top of the show is we talk about what we've been playing, what we've been watching, and all that good stuff. Steven, what's been going on? What do you? I'm planning? glad you added the word "watching" at the end there, and we didn't we didn't plan this beforehand. I'm finished Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood this week. Oh my god! I know, I, so freaking good. I, I finished it. Uh, what maybe a week before you did? Um, mm-hmm. You and I probably started around the same time, but I've been traveling and had plane rides to watch yeah. anime. Um, it's so good. Uh, it's so yeah. good, and Stephen and I are way behind the game on this. Like we, we're late to this party. Uh, I always am when it comes to anime. Yeah, I'm we, so you, you and I, or at least in my case, I rely a lot on Brody to like yeah. point me in the right direction of like, hey, this is an anime you really need to watch. Occasionally, yeah. I'll find a good one on my own. Uh, but yeah, Full Metal was was one that Brody had to suggest to us both, and uh, I'm so glad well, he did. It was really really good. I mean, my brother Andrew from Friendly Fire Games. Mm-hmm. Uh, he loved Full Metal Alchemist. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we can't really I, trust what Andrew 
likes. We can't. You know what I mean? That's not a good he, reference, point he, of reference. No. And, I mean, I'd watched it before, and I was like, I bet I would like this, but I just couldn't get invested enough. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like, I think I just needed to get through that initial threshold. Mm-hmm. And once I got in, like, past the first four or five episodes, I, I was hooked. Right. The first um, season is, is really dark. Like, yeah. there's there's some shit that still happens later in this in the the show, but like I still don't think anything was quite on the level no. uh, that it is in the first season. No. So really, I if was you emotionally can get past dis- that, y- you'll be fine. But I was emotionally disturbed three times in the course of ten episodes of yeah. the show. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. But the, uh, but, but so good. The, um, the girl and the dog like stuck with me. For a long time, and, yeah. I, and I like how that was always called back to in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's what I like about enclosed anime, like yeah. anime that do not overstay their welcome. They're always going somewhere, right? Is that like every episode matters? Yeah, and that's why I definitely move more towards shorter anime, like the anime that I just started watching this week, One Punch Man. Oh, it's so <laughs> which, good. Oh man! I... Season two of that comes out really soon, so you, it does. If you pace it out well enough, you may can just jump right on to season two as well. I'm I'm already hooked. Like I, you know, we I asked that question. If you could describe yourself in three fictional characters, who would they be? Mm-hmm. I didn't realize how much of Saitama is actually in me. Right. Just because he's so unfazed by the world, like yeah, absolutely. When when the mosquito queen was attacking Genos, and he like had lost all of his limbs, and then Saitama like, just swaps her, and she explodes, and he just goes, "Man, bugs suck." <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man, I might be a little Saitama, but yeah. I, I've 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 loved every single episode. I think I'm like three or four episodes in. It's as funny as it is awesome, and just yeah. hardcore. Um. But I'm really enjoying that. Um, Good. But that's what I've been watching. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been playing more Dragon's Dogma. Right. Uh, everyone on the channel, unless if I made a last minute decision, you saw me play Dragon's Dogma last night. Yep. Um, and hopefully it was at least a little bit enjoyable. Um, I'm having to lean over to look at my stuff. We finished Metro this week. Finished Metro. Uh, I thought there were three Metro games you were trying to get through, but it was only two. Sorry, you cut off for a second. Sorry, I was saying I, I was surprised because it was uh, it was only uh, two. I thought you had to get through three. Um, no, th- the third one is Exodus coming out in right. February. Yeah. So it is a trilogy, um, and despite my best efforts, did not get the good ending, which means I did not get the canonical ending with Last Light. Right. Um, which was really frustrating because I, I really wanted to kill some people but didn't for the sake of the good morality. Right. Um, and I ended up getting the bad ending anyway because the morality system in that game is interesting. Mm-hmm. I'll just talk about this for a couple minutes and then I'll move on, just to kind of put a bow on it. Um, you, you, when you uh, tuned in and you saw the little one, you were like, "What in the hell is that?" Yeah, little baby ET or whatever you called him, Baby yeah. Shack. I call him Baby Shack just because that was my name in one of our videos, and <laughs> he's a child. Uh, that's not his actual canon name, um, but he is one of the dark ones, which mm-hmm. is the um, the race of creatures that lives on the Earth's surface after the apocalypse. Right. Um, and he is thought to be the last one because you killed the rest of his kind by nuking them, basically. Interesting. And so when he meets you, you are basically teaching him what humanity, what morality is. So the mora- the morality system in Metro Last Light is not, am I a good person, am I a bad person? It is, how does this creature perceive me and thus perceive humans? So you're basically shaping the the morality of another species. So it's it's a really wow. interesting kind of backseat story um, that is being told. Like uh, with these characters, there are these two characters, uh, Lesnitsky and Pavel, that you're trying to basically hunt down. And um, when you have the option to spare them or kill them. Right. And when you spare one of them, he just goes, oh, so that's mercy. I understand this. I'll remember this. Mm-hmm. And so you're teaching this child, basically, what right and wrong is. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if any of that will be in Exodus. Right. I'm really excited for Exodus after playing through the Metro games again. Um, but, yeah, we'll see in February. I will be. Awesome. Yep, that's going to be good. Um, well, I have been playing uh, a little game called Starlink. Uh, 
also known as Star Fox, nope. Battle for Atlas. Nope, nope, we're not doing this, Jake. <laughs> this this argument is still going on a week later. <laughs> <laughs> so last podcast, me and Steven just briefly touched on it, uh, but at the time I hadn't been able to play uh, very much of it. I've uh, been able to play a little bit more now. Um, I really like it. Um, yeah. I every time I every time I've had to stop playing, I've wanted to go back and and play it some more. Yeah. Um, it's it's a good switch game to to have right now, kind of as we're waiting for more things to come out. Uh, unfortunately, I have Spider Man and uh, Red Dead Redemption Two that are calling my, me back to my PS4. Uh, so yeah. I kind of get a little grumpy when I'm playing Switch uh, and not those. But um, it's really good. It's really fun. Um, the controls are nice. Uh, like I said in last week's podcast, um, I got. Does to it digital. require both Joy Cons to play? Say again. Is it both Joy Cons or just one to play? It's uh, both. Okay. I, I'm sure. I don't. Well, I don't know if I don't think there's a multiplayer aspect of it. So I think there is. Is there? Um, I, I saw on the commercial, and you're going to be getting a lot of questions from me as you talk about it because I'm getting a Switch a right. week from today as the when this podcast goes out. Um, so I'm really excited. But but um, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions because I'm debating on getting it. But I think I saw on the trailer that they had someone else join in. I don't know if it's online or local only, but I think there's a co-op element. I am looking right now uh, to see if it's multiplayer. Um, but while I search for that, um, it's a lot of fun. I got the digital version, uh, so I don't have any of the physical toys. Um, and it really... I basically have access, at, with the digital version, I have access to all of the ships except for one. Uh, that I can see right now. There may be more like coming down the pipe later, um, but as of right now, I can see uh, I, c- I can use all of them, uh, and yeah. that extends to weapons as well. Um, mm-hmm. I can pretty much use any of the weapons I want to, um, uh, and there's a lot of them. I played with the imploder. Uh, in the Let's Play, and I kept that one around because it was awesome. Because it just shoots a big explosion that just like sits yeah. in an area, and anything caught in that void just takes on damage. Um, right. And it was really, really, uh, it was really, really effective. There's one great moment in the uh, Let's Play that I did that I've I've been able to replicate a couple times uh, when like a group of enemies spawns in and they're all together. And I'll mm-hmm. shoot the imploder at them, and it'll just wipe at least two or three of them coming through that. Yeah. Um, anyway, so it's it's been just, a lot. Of, it was a lot of fun. I, I looked it up. It has uh, local co-op. Gotcha, gotcha. Drop in, drop out. Yep. So That's, we uh, might do that for the charity live stream. What's that? We're doing a charity live stream. We are doing a charity live stream on November third, uh, supporting Extra Life, supporting a, a, a local hospital for us called Blair E. Batson. Uh, it's going to be very cool. Uh, we're going to be doing a 24-hour live stream. We've got a lot of fun things planned. We've got one thing that we've kind of focused on a little bit uh, that's going to be something different than gaming uh, that hopefully you will enjoy, uh, but it'll give us a nice break uh, from some gaming stuff. But uh, it's going to be yeah. a long day uh, that we get to support this hospital, so it's going to be really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, detouring again. Uh, from from Starlink, but uh, yeah, I really liked it. And you know, Stephen, your thing was, ah, oh, it's you know, it's not a Star Fox game. It doesn't have yeah. Space it looked battles. all like uh, like a hover tank game to me. Is all it looked like right. when when and, uh, they showed gameplay like E three and stuff. Yeah, and there is an element to that. And uh, once you, so what happens is you uh, you kind of get the story started. You have a space battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the end of that space battle, you're damaged and you crash land. And you're only able to hover, but by the end of that, yeah. your you, your engines are fixed and you can take off and fly. Uh, I didn't try this because it didn't prompt me to do this, but it looked like I could just start flying at any point on the planet and just keep like I could stay in a- altitude and fly across the planet uh, or just go straight into space. Um, and I love that like we're moving into a system as as like. Game makers are doing less and less, like breakage points. Like it's more, like hiding it, the loading screens behind. Yeah, there's no loading yeah. screens, and it's just like you're you're zipping on through. 
Yeah. Um, that was probably the best thing about No Man's Sky mm-hmm. was just the fact that you could seamlessly no loading screen fly into a planet and then fly out of the planet. And that's exactly what you can do here yeah. with Starlink. Um, and it's really, really good. Um, I can't, I, I haven't gotten very far in the story. Um, to be honest, I, I'm not very interested in the story. Um, there right. is a Star Fox subplot that's like happening uh, if you have the Switch version. Uh, and I imagine that if you don't have the Switch version, I imagine if you don't have the Switch version, it's just not showing you these scenes because um, they. I, feel, I believe that's the case. They feel very integrated. Like it is the Star Fox team on the Equinox, which is the Starlink ship, inter- interacting with the characters, but it's mostly about. It's in relation to things that are happening with the Star Fox team. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, major scenes that, that tell the story of Starlink happen without the Star Fox characters there specifically. So, like, they're there. They're just not in the scene. Um, so, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. There's, like, a... There's something about their their captain who gets kidnapped, and you, so, you see this in the very beginning. Um he knows how to make a certain fuel type that no one else in the galaxy knows. And right. so this evil force is trying to get him to teach them how to make that energy uh, so that they can use it for evil or whatever. Uh, it sounds so, like uh, sounds like that episode of Rick and Morty where they're trying to get the recipe for dark fuel, dark matter fuel or whatever. Right, exactly. And then he teaches similar. them how to make a nuke and they <laughs> nuke themselves. <laughs> yeah. uh, exactly. So... Uh, but the, the Star Fox team story is interesting. They're trying to get to Wolf uh, and stop him, uh, and they've kind of teamed up with Starlink to see if they can help each other out. Um, but anyway, it's, uh, it's, it's cool. It, 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 it's, it's a lot of fun. So I think your, your younger sibling, Steven, would really enjoy it, uh, mm. and I think, you, I think you would enjoy certain parts of it. Uh, like I was telling you before we started recording, um, I fought a bounty hunter in space, um, mm-hmm. And basically, it's like I found pieces of his ship, and I was trying to, like, it, it kept pointing me to the ship and saying, like, hey, there's something over there. And I was trying to mm-hmm. figure out how to interact with it, and just waves and waves of uh, fighters just came, kept coming in. And I had to do dogfights uh, around this ship, uh, and it was really, really intense. I died. I This is how I figured out how many ships I had access to, because when you die, you just put in a new ship and go. Uh, um, and so I just kept loading in however many ships I could. And eventually I ran out and I, cause I found the last one that I had to buy to get. Um, anyway, so a lot of fun. I think you should try and check it out, Steven. Maybe, maybe we yeah. can play it together sometime and you can see what you want to do from there. Cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, the only other thing that, uh, I've been doing this week is Red Dead Redemption 2 came out. Uh, and I have not had the chance to play it yet because as of this recording, it's not officially out. Um, yep. But I believe Miles and I are picking it up tonight at 9. Are but you? knowing uh, both of our internets, we might be able to play it after it finishes downloading come Sunday afternoon. God, I'm so <laughs> glad they did a preload, which is pretty standard now. But like, I, I'm glad they advertised the preload. Like They were like, hey, yep. pre-order and preload. Uh, and and all this sort of stuff. So I've had mine preloaded. Mine's ready to go. Hopefully it'll just be ready to roll. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, the embargo is up for a lot of people. Um, so there are reviews everywhere. I'm sure you've seen new- on your news feed. Uh, and especially it's going to be worse when this airs because it will be out. Um, but uh, it's it it's getting tens across the board. Uh, perfect scores mm-hmm. across the board. Um, I called it way back when that this was going to be game of the year um, and that I was pretty confident and knowing that so many places have given it a perfect score and that it's technically on the same level at least in numbers as uh, Mm -hmm. God of War uh, I would be shocked if it doesn't it's going to be in the conversation and I I still think it's going to win I agree Um, but we've seen a lot of stuff um uh, something that I was not necessarily expecting just because no one else does this anymore, uh, but it has cheat codes. Um, yeah, you mentioned that before we went, uh, started recording, and um, you said that, and then no one does do cheat codes anymore. Right. 
But Rockstar, I guess, because it's been a staple of Grand Theft Auto. Right. They've been doing cheat codes. I think GTA V had the cheat code implemented as well because of the phone. You could put in a number and then you'd like get infinite ammo or something like that. Right, right, exactly. How, how do they do it in this game? So it's really cool. And I just, while we're here, because I'm sure some people are, are nervous right now, I'm going to say that we're not going to talk spoilers because we don't know anything right now. Like We're, right. we're going off what other people have told us uh, or, or what we're seeing in other news stories. Uh but if you're like Brody and you just don't want to hear anything, uh, mm -hmm. you you may may find this weary. But there's no st story spoilers. This is going to be more like what can you do in the world spoilers. Um, so right. just keeping that in mind. So it's really cool how they do this, Stephen. Uh, you can't use the cheat code until you find the cheat code. You find the cheat code by buying newspapers in the game, and the cheat code is hidden in the newspaper. That's really cool. Isn't it, though? Uh, I think that's a really, really fun way to use the cheat code. So, obviously, you can Google or go to IGN or wherever and search cheat codes in our GT or whatever, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. But <sighs> even if you find the code that they've told you about, you have to go get the newspaper uh, before you mm -hmm. can use it. Um, so, I, I, I think that's a really, really fun way to do it but man the game looks so good um you know i've watched a couple people's reviews and just really just to watch kind of the gameplay um mm -hmm. they had to like brew their own coffee uh ign had a great great quote that was like this game this game about or it was like the fishing is good too there are 36 different types of fish i've caught four and this is a game about cowboys <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like this game that has nothing to do with fishing has a great fishing system a lot mm -hmm. of fish to catch and it's not even what this is about um it, it it just looks so fun and like uh they were talking about the audio even like it's got that if a bullet ricochet sounds just like it does in hollywood fantastic um, gotta get that bullet ricochet uh i just i can't wait i can't wait to dive in i can't wait to see the world um because it just seems it, the way they, uh, some of the reviewers I've read have described it is, in other games it would be tedious, but in this game it's like exciting little details, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like eating to heal, you have to brew coffee, you know, you have to reload manually. They were saying that you have to, and then there's like weapon degra uh, degrading, you have to clean your yeah. weapons and stuff. Um, mm hmm they were saying, like, there's all of this, but, like, instead of it being tedious, it, it builds the world. Um, so, I don't know. I'm excited to get into it. Um, cheat Codes was really the one thing I wanted to talk about because it's just, like, I, I was not expecting that, even though it is uh, a Rockstar game. Uh, but I'm excited to dive in. So, I'm, I'm yep. frustrated, Stephen, that you're probably going to get to play it before me because I'm flying I, back. I from wouldn't count on that because um, tonight I'm going to be streaming Dragon's Dogma, tonight being Thursday. Um, then tomorrow or today uh, for those watching this is Anna's birthday. Uh, that's right. Yeah. You're going to get to play it before me. Well, I don't know. Well, if you don't play it tonight, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, if you're going to be busy all day tomorrow, maybe so. But anyway, I might, I might knock some out in the morning. I don't yeah. know. We'll see. Gonna, well, I'm going to be doing our, where is their stream? So <laughs> that's right. That's that. that that's the things it. I do for you people on this channel. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> we make it work here at Total Games. Um, well, with that said, I am going to be streaming Red Dead Redemption tonight, as well as uh, My Hero Academia's uh, one. It's My Heroes One Justice. One Justice fighting yeah. game. Uh, I'm going to be streaming. Speaking both of, of My those. Hero Academia, no, that's not that transition, Stephen. It's 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 a good one, but it's not it's mm -hmm. not where we're going. Um, I'm going to be streaming. I took a shot. I, I, you, I you took a shot. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to be streaming both of those uh, tonight, so look forward to that. We'll talk about that again at the end of the show. But uh, anyway, moving on, Stephen. We'll transition into news, even though it's not going to go straight to your news story that you want to get to. Sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. The one time I first. break news before you do. <laughs> We're going to talk about some delays first. So uh, early on this week, uh, we had a couple of delays from a couple different things. Uh, the first being uh, Days Gone has been delayed from... Uh, or it's been delayed to April 2019. Uh, so at E3 this year, during the pre-E3 uh, PlayStation live streams, 
they announced uh, the release date of Days Gone, and it was February twenty second. Is that the yep. is that the the golden day? Yeah, February twenty uh, second was the golden day. Right now, everything's moving. <laughs> well, it uh, that was the date at the time. We were all like, "Oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. That's going to be a, a dry spell." Yada yada. As E3 went through, everyone was releasing their stuff on February 22nd. So yep. it's a very crowded day. It's a very crowded period because there's a lot of games surrounding that day. Somebody had to move. And I'm glad Days Gone decided to move. Um, mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of stuff that I'm going to want to play. This Days Gone is kind of on my, it's a PlayStation exclusive, so I'm going to try and play it list. Uh, but it's not like a, oh man. I gotta get in there. I gotta. I gotta buy that. Um, yep. So that would have way been drowned out uh, by uh, some of the other games that were that were going on. Uh, so I'm glad they pushed. Again, it's being pushed to April 2019. So two th- two months later um, should give it a little bit of time to breathe uh, and come back to it. Yeah, it's funny because. February twenty second was is the day that you know all the games decided to have a release date. Um, it was that Anthem, Metro Exodus, and there was one or two more, right? I don't know. Uh, I don't like. know that there's any more on that day, but there's some like the week before that, the the yeah. months surrounding that. Uh, Kingdom Hearts three comes out like late uh-huh. January, so uh, there's there's a lot going on. I just I just think it's funny how. I think Anthem should still push its release date, mm-hmm. and I honestly think it will. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like another game moved from the February 22nd. I just don't remember what it was. And then Days Gone did it. And now it's like Metro Exodus, the game that has gotten basically no publicity, is the one game that's like, no, we're standing our ground. We're coming out February 22nd. <laughs> so We're not moving. Um, well, maybe that'll work out for them. I don't know. Yeah, Anthem is a weird one, too, that's coming out mm-hmm. that day that's like, we still don't know a whole lot. Uh, in fact, they mm-hmm. tweeted something about at Paris Games Week they're going to have another Q&A. But the last Q&A... <laughs> the last one was garbage. Was garbage, yeah, because people were basically asking really basic questions. The best questions question that we've... was asked by a 12-year-old. Right. It's stuff that like we've really just known. In fact, they tweeted something. And they were like, "Get your questions ready," and I almost tweeted them back and said, uh, "Does this game use me- uh, mechanized suits to fight?" <laughs> um, but I didn't. I decided it is was this, too. Is this game coming out on Xbox? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. I and whatever. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's not the only thing that got delayed this week. Uh, Fortnite Save the World is been yep. delayed to 2019, uh, coming to free to play. Uh, so right now you can pay to play that. You shouldn't pay to play that, uh, but you can. Uh, and it's now being pushed to sometime in 2019, coming to free to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we so so the f- whole funny thing with Fortnite to me is that we played the Save the World mode long before Battle Royale when it was, was a thing. N- yeah, when it was nothing. When you said Fortnite and people were like, what's Fortnite? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We played the Save the World mode and by the end of our Let's Play series that we did on it, we were honestly over it. Like We, we just hated it. did not enjoy it. Um, it was not what we wanted out of it. We were hoping for like a build forts, like, like have this one fort that you're building Maybe yeah, like scavenge by day, and yeah, build, scavenge by and then, day, protect by night. Yeah, and that just has never that promise of that type of game has never really come to fruition. Um, yeah. There are certain modes, and there's some new defense modes that are that are nice, and 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 Brody's played a lot of it more and said it's better. But uh, in general, you know, I'm just not the biggest fan of the save the world mode. Yeah. The reason they're postponing is they say they want to do a lot on the back end to make sure that, I guess, servers can handle the, the influx of people playing the Save the World mode. That's that's cute. I know. Well, It's <laughs> cute that they actually think that enough people will be playing Save the World. Exactly. Um, the other thing, though, is they said there's a lot of things they just need to fix and, like, rework. And, you know, we when we played it and we paid to play it... Um, you and Brody were like, yeah, I can see where this is 
going to be free play. Like there's already some elements that like, yeah, it's screened free to play because right. it wasn't always supposed to be that way. Um, and then it just the the studio or the publisher destroyed it. Yeah. Well, I wonder if a lot of this rework is going to be taking out anything left in it that doesn't scream free play. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. I feel like it's really, really going to double down on the free playness of it, um, and that's unfortunate because uh, you know any any amount of it getting better was only from you know it not being free play necessarily. So I don't know, yeah. but this doesn't surprise me. Uh, it, what surprises me is that they're still supporting that mode uh, as much as they are. I'll, I'll tell you what's going to happen. They're going to be saying gonna they're, they're going to be they're saying right now well, we're working on it. It's going to release free to play next year. Right. They're not going to work on it because <laughs> guess what? Fortnite Battle Royale has competition now, and they actually have to try. You know that thing that people right. do, <laughs> and so they're going to. Work on B- Fortnite BR. Try to make it relevant when standing up against uh, Black Ops Four and Battlefield Five or Battlefield Five. Yeah, yeah. Um, gosh, naming the previous one Battlefield One just screwed up everything. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, but and then they're gonna realize, hmm, we don't care about this, right? So they're not gonna work on it. They're gonna release it in a half-assed state. And they're, they're going to be like, oh, here's Save the World, free for everybody. Right. And it's going to be pretty much in the shape that we played it, and they're not going to expand upon it because that's not their cash cow. Right. Yeah, and, you know, that's 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 a smart business decision. Um, I'm glad that at this point they've at least kept, kept it going and kept supporting it for the people that did buy into it. Um, but, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how that all goes. Uh, the last delay, and this one is the one that's the most confusing for me. Uh, Wonder Woman, 1984, which, by the way, I love that they're just putting the year on it, and not, you know, it's not two, it's just 1984. Um, that has been delayed till 2020. Um, so I'll tell you why. I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll tell you what's going to happen here too, Jake. I'm other than, well, let me let me finish. It was originally slated to come out November 1st, 2019. Uh, Gal Gadot uh, was who like dropped the news, and mm-hmm. she posted a tweet that said, "We're so excited to announce that Wonder Woman is uh, returning to its home in 2020." And it's just like, what? Why? Why is it returning to its home in 2020? Did you originally have it dated for 2020, and then y'all bumped it up, but now it's back? Like. It was very confusing to me. I, I still don't understand. But anyway, what's going to happen with this one, Stephen? Well, it's not so much what's going to happen as, as as it is what did happen. Um, DC has no idea what the f they're doing. Well, that's, I mean, that's what happened. That's that. Yeah, yeah. Duh. And and I'm not saying that as someone to to mock DC because right. I'm I'm marrying a bigger DC fan than I am. I used to be all about DC. You and me both. Same. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, same. And I'm just way more Marvel now because mm-hmm. of the movies. But. Um, and I love DC still, but their their cinematic stuff is just it just doesn't have his head on straight. And with all the stuff happening with um, Henry Cavill and and uh, Ben Affleck, mm-hmm. and the Flash movie got delayed as well. Yep. Um, so all we have now for the foreseeable future, I guess for the next two years or so, is Aquaman and Shazam because they're they're done. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, so. What DC is going to be trying to do is they're going to be trying to regroup and figure out where they are going because they played such such a short game with their movie strategy because yep. they you know Marvel did Iron Man one and two Incredible Hulk Captain America Thor then Avengers mm-hmm. and DC was like we don't got time for that so here's Man of Steel Superman two which is also Batman but also Wonder Woman Justice League yeah so exactly. they played the short strategy trying to get in on the game. And now they realize the error of their ways is that mm-hmm. they rushed these movies and they were kind of critical bombs. Yeah. And so now they're trying to re-eva- reevaluate. They've got James Gunn on Suicide Squad too, so that'll be good. But that'll hopefully be good. Yeah, yeah. that's what um, we uh, on the road here. We were talking about James Gunn and and that whole deal. I can't remember exactly what. Basically, we just kind of circled back around to the whole topic, and we're like something 
had to have been going on behind the scenes yep. that no one knows about. Um, yep. And 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 we've said that before, but uh, my uh, someone whoever I was talking to kind of brought up the point of I wonder if if James Gunn was trying to bite off too much, like bite it, get a bigger piece of the pie. Like basically, we were wondering if he was trying to become Kevin Feige, you know, like get even deeper in and and to really be directing a lot of pieces. And if that's kind of what, you know, that was the turning point. Um, He said in the past that there's a very select few Marvel movies he'd actually want to direct. So I don't know if that's the case. Well, regardless, what we were saying, what that got us to was uh, now that he's at D.C., they should just let him be that. <laughs> they should they should let him uh, help them revamp and and yeah. rethink where they're going and what they're doing. Yeah, if they but, would replace Zack Snyder's role with nothing against Zack Snyder, right? I like some of his movies, but if they would give that to James Gunn instead, oh boy, yeah, like a, a cinematic universe that has all been touched and blessed by James Gunn. <laughs> just think about that. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. That would be that would be something. Um, but who knows? Maybe they can do it. I don't know. It still surprises me that the Joker origin movie is still on track. Like, that's still good to go. But it's not a part of the go. DC Extended Universe. It's just its own standalone thing. It is? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because notice the Joker in this origin movie already looks way older than Jared Leto's Joker. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So it's oh, I not did, I didn't connect- expect it to make sense yeah. in the tie-in. I just I knew they were doing it. Um, no, it's it is completely separate. It is its own thing. I just don't understand DC. I don't understand. I don't. I don't either. I I just I love the comics, but God bless them. I know. God bless them. <laughs> I, and their TV shows too are great, but it's just and their animated movies are great. It's oh just, an, oh man, DC animated movies. They're that's, great. That's they're absolutely they're great. great. I wish they would just yeah. they would jump all in on that slice of the pie. Make and, me an animated cinematic universe. I mean, That's for real, I for real. They that they have always, in my opinion, those have always been great. Like even the mm-hmm. Marvel stuff that you see on like Disney XD and and that sort of stuff. That's animated Marvel. I don't like it as much. Um, yeah, the, even even the, the Killing Joke was bad, oh but it wasn't gosh. the worst thing no, I've it's seen. Not, it, there are there are good Marvel animated yeah. shows that are still worse than that. Um, yes. I, I don't know, but anyway, th- yeah. So anyway, DC, yeah. figure your crap out. Speaking of other things, I don't understand. Uh, they're making a live action My Hero Academia movie. <laughs> I I found this out before anyone else at Troll Games. I just want to say that I looked over at my phone and was like, "Huh, got to text them because they normally beat me to the punch." <laughs> they normally so, beat me to the punch. Um, um, well, you talk about I, it then. What what are you? What's okay. your take on this? It's Legendary Pictures, right? And if there was a Western movie studio to do an anime adaptation it's legendary they've done good godzilla stuff they did pacific rim once good um (laughs) second time no um so my thing is if it's gonna work it's gonna be under legendary right i think it's completely unnecessary because the anime adaptation is already basically perfect yeah i mean Um, the anime is yeah very much perfect um yes but i think that if it was going to happen it could happen a lot worse than it's going to happen at Legendary. That's, so that's a fair that's a fair point. I I'm am, along for the ride. I'm going to be paying attention to it. I am expecting it to be garbage. I will be pleasantly surprised if it's anything else. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I sit on it as well. It's it's completely unnecessary. The anime series is excellent. One of the best animes going right now. Um, yep. Why does it need to be live action? And I'm I'm just hesitant. I'm hesitant. Um, what is it they say? Carefully optimistic or something like that. Yeah, um, reluctantly optimistic. Reluctantly optimistic. Uh, so I, now I, I, don't get me wrong. If it's done well, mm-hmm. that's going to be amazing. Because like, just think of like a comic book in the form of a live action movie is basically what it would need to be. Like, with, with all the colors, with all the characters and everything, it could be really cool. I just don't see them doing it right. <laughs> see, I, I, I don't know. I, I've i always been of the opinion, when there's something that's animated, it never looks 
as cool in live action. And that right. may just be a personal preference on my on my end. But like, uh, this is a horrible example, but Lav- Avatar The Last Airbender by uh, M. Night Shyamalan. Horrible. The anim- the, the, the show, the, the animation is awesome. Live action well, can't capture yeah. how that it's, how cool that is. Um, I feel like it could be different with My Hero Academia because we've seen a bunch of Western superhero movies that are on about the same scale. Right. Um, honestly, My Hero Academia, it makes me think kind of a combination of Marvel and Star Wars. Because you got a lot of goofy looking characters. Right. Uh, um, but the superpowers and the way they move and the way they fight and everything still could look like it does in Marvel. Like, and if you add some of the visual style of like, you you haven't seen this movie and we're going to fix that, Scott Pilgrim <laughs> versus the world. Right. It's mm-hmm. literally a video game in a live action movie. So when he beats somebody, you see like the KO pop up on screen. Right. Stuff like that that makes it look like a comic book on the screen could be really cool. And I think that it would work better than something like uh, Avatar or um, Full Metal uh, Alchemist would work yeah. on screen because I, it, that's a lot more mystical, whimsical, and absolutely. special effects driven. I, I completely agree. And I, I that again, like you've already said, what's going for this is that a Western studio is doing this, uh, Legendaries is doing this, uh, and and of all the anime I've ever seen. My Hero Academia is the most Americanized, if, yep. if that makes sense. Like, yep. All it's Might, very Western influence. All Might is very Western. Like, it yeah. just clicks. Um, fun um, fact, I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of the places, because Hodokoshi, the guy that wrote it, is mm-hmm. really into Star Wars, they're uh, named after Star Wars places. I may have noticed that subconsciously, but it just yeah. clicked now. Like Tatooine, Station, Dagobah yeah. something, stuff like that, yeah. That's funny. So, so like, Hodokoshi's huge into Western culture. And so the, the anime is made that way. Right. Um, well, and so that, again, makes me think, okay, maybe it'll work. We Like you said, yeah. we already have a ton of great superhero movies. Maybe a show about, or a movie where there's a ton of superheroes Yeah. Uh, would if it work. doesn't try to disconnect itself too much from the fact that it is a manga or an anime, like, right. if it tries to embrace that colorful, cartoony style, but still being live action, right. I think it could be a really interesting visual take. Um, I think it's unnecessary still, right? But it could be cool, and that's and that's the other thing. Like, I assume this would be not necessarily a reboot, but like this would retell the story that we already know. Maybe like season one in a movie. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Anyway, we'll find out. That's something we'll have to wait to see. Uh, last bit of far. news: it is a video game bit of news, and if you're a Pokemon fan, it's a Pokemon fan news. Hey. Uh, yay Pokemon. Yay um, Pokemon. So this phenomena happened on uh, Pokemon Let's Go where this tiny little metallic uh, Pokemon started popping up. His name was Meltang. Uh, Nintendo or, uh, Pokemon eventually released a video where uh, Professor Willow, who is the Pokemon Go professor, and Professor Oak, who is the uh, the main like Pokemon professor, but it's po- it's Professor Oak from Pokemon Let's Go, which is coming out soon. Um, those two like having a discussion about oh this creature Meltang has appeared, uh, and they talk about oh man this is a missing Pokemon that's thousands of years old yada yada yada, uh, and they're like we're gonna keep doing research on this, but it was like c- confirmation like okay this is a new Pokemon, his name's Meltang, it's this type it does this sort of thing cool uh they released a video this week similar situation uh but professor oak is they're talking about all the things they've been researching and they have a ton of meltangs like there there were probably 30 or 40 on the screen uh and he's talking about all these things that he's noticed about it like it melts any metal yada 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 and there's this this bit where he's like yeah that's why i don't have any more equipment because it's melted all my equipment yada 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 whatever well, suddenly the Meltangs start to group together, and they start mashing together and, like, clumping up and getting bigger and bigger, and eventually it evolves and becomes this new Pokemon called Melmetal. Uh, it's huge. Um, the the uh, Meltang was this little glob of, it looked like Mercury, with a yeah. hexagon nut on the top. Uh, this is a huge blob of Mercury... 
with nuts on the hexagon nuts on the end of it as like fists and then a hexagon head and there's a big hexagon in the middle of him as well uh, anyway huge Pokemon um, mm-hmm. and so after the end of that I started some articles started coming out and there was like statements about it uh, to get Meltang or Mel Metal in Pokemon Let's Go or Go for that matter you have to catch a certain number of Meltang uh, to get Meltang can- candies which is a thing in uh, Pokemon Let's Go that's how you evolve or not evolve, but level. Well, I think it is evolve. It's evolve and level up your Pokemon. Yeah. And so, for Pokemon Let's Go to get Meltang, you're gonna have to play Pokemon Go. Um, and supposedly, yeah. if you play both, that will help you get to that process faster. Um, because you can, if you send your Meltang to Let's Go, that gives you additional candies that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Um, the Pokemon's cool. I'm frustrated that I'm going to have to play Pokemon Go again. Well, f- think about all those kids that don't have smartphones that are going to be playing this game. I know, right? That There's that. Or just, just forget that. Just who, who, who are locked into, I can't just go to the park today because I want to catch some more right. Meltang. Like, they're going to have to just deal with whatever schedule their parents have for them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think... I think it's a from a bit from a from a let's highlight both game standpoint. It, it makes perfect sense. You have to play both to get this. I just hate that you have to play both to get this. I, I yeah. wish it was a uh, playing both is going to speed this process up. But um, basically, Pokemon Go people can play it on their own and get it eventually. Pokemon Let's Go people are going to have to play Pokemon Go at least from from how it sounded in the articles I've read. Um, that's that's how it's gonna work. So, yeah. I don't know that so, I'm gonna try that hard to get it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I know that you said that was our last story, but right. I realized that there was a story that I heard. I think yesterday that you didn't mention, and okay. so I wanted to run it by you. Run it by me. Um, someone may have leaked the full Smash Brothers Ultimate fighter league oh gosh yeah i forgot about that what the the reason i didn't write that down as a story is because i could not find i've got it pulled up well so i found i looked at the picture Mm -hmm. i didn't see anybody new so i was confused and then somebody brody maybe sent a link that showed potential spoilers for smash i don't care i don't know if anybody cares about spoilers in smash uh it showed the minecraft kid the fortnite that's soldier that's and all. That's not the same one I'm looking at. Okay. All right. That. When so the I one saw I'm that, looking at. I was at, like, cool. There's nothing. There's nothing new. Yeah. Right, the one I'm looking at um, has a believable roster aside from one that is a bit out of the stretch of imagination. But I'm just going to go ahead and uh, read this to you. All right. So Game Rant uh, was where I saw this yesterday, but a few other places are reporting on it. So I don't know who right. broke the story. Um, but it appeared first on 4chan. Um, there was a printout. Right. Of the full roster, like that that banner that's being added onto, mm-hmm. and there was a printout with the complete roster that leaked online through Snapchat. Um, I believe is what happened. Yes, I believe so. It it, it appeared first on 4chan, um, but and I'm looking at it, and it's really grainy the version I'm looking at now, but because it, it outlines everything. Right. But the leaks include, like, because it has everyone in there, mm-hmm. Shadow the Hedgehog, which. Makes I'm sense. not surprised. I expected him. Mm-hmm. Isaac from Golden Sun, which also makes perfect sense. Because okay, uh, yeah. he's been a support trophy for a while. Um, Cosmos from Xenoblade. I have no idea who that is. I don't know who that is either, but I'm not surprised about Xenoblade. They've, they've yeah. done a lot of stuff with that recently. So uh, Ken from Street Fighter. Undoubtedly, he'll be an Echo Fighter. Okay. He's uh, a yeah, reused blonde counterpart. Yeah. Um, Mock Rider from Mock Rider. I don't know um, that one. I've, I've heard the name. Not familiar. Chorus Kids from Rhythm Heaven. Uh, Gee whiz, this is a lot more than I was expecting. Yeah, and there's two more. <laughs> um, Gino from Super Mario RPG. Which He's finally getting his day. Everybody wants. And this is if this is legitimate, and this is the one that makes me think this isn't legitimate. Banjo-Kazooie. Everybody's been saying Banjo's coming, maybe. But he's Microsoft. No, he's rare. 
But but Rare is like they're in Microsoft's pocket. I know, but so is King uh, uh, King K. Rule. He's Rare technically. Is he really? Yeah, that's that, a good. That's, point, that's a weird. Yeah. That's a weird Nintendo partnering with someone else for a franchise deal uh, that happens. Uh, I, I did, for the you audio listeners, I did this really intricate like yeah. hand dance. Um, yeah, so there's some deal with that. So as soon as King K. Rule was confirmed, people exploded with mm-hmm. banjo. Banjo's coming. Like at the very least, the door is open. Man, um, you would have thought that he had fallen out of relevance, though, at this point. Because, like, he hasn't... Has he even ever appeared on a Nintendo system? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he Did he really? Okay. Banjo-Kazooie All, and Banjo-Tooie, I believe. Banjo, Banjo-Kazooie Banjo was 64, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. That's right. And that's where most people played it. Uh, or at least yeah. I would think most... I, I, I'm pretty sure that's where most people played it. I was thinking it. of um, Nuts and Bolts. That was the one that was Nuts and Bolts came out through Microsoft years mm-hmm. later like i want to mm-hmm. say xbox 360 time uh but i don't i don't know that for sure well i will send you the picture that i'm currently looking at and you can um you can see for yourself no i believe you i'm good i i've looked at the picture and that's why i didn't add it because i couldn't i couldn't decipher anything from it so i didn't yeah. know that somebody had created a list that said here's what everybody's seeing um, yeah, well, I'm that's, I'm that's going to uh, more, look at it again. Way more fighters than I ever would have expected. I expected yeah. to hear like four new fighters, and and one of those was Shadow being an Echo fighter. Um, I, I yeah, I, I said uh, uh, the last time we looked at this that I saw a spot where Sha- it, it was like begging for Shadow the Hedgehog to be there. Right, and so I was like, I guarantee you, Shadow's going to be here. Right, um, but Shadow makes the most sense. Yeah. I'm glad to see Geno's there. I'm really glad to see Isaac from Golden Sun. Yep. If this is all legitimate. Um, the, all of those that you just listed sound legitimate. You talking about yeah. Banjo, that sounds legit to me. So. See, I had forgotten that Rare did... There was a time when Rare partnered a lot with Nintendo. Yeah. Because the only... Like, Rare... When I think of Rare today, I think of, like, one of the studios that is in Microsoft's pocket, basically. But that that's a right. good point. I forgot that it, they were... And, and, and I don't running. even really understand the state of Rare right now. Um, yeah. Because the team who did Yoko uh that that was a team of people from Rare who did work on Banjo Kazooie, but weren't with Rare anymore because Rare is in a weird place. So I don't understand the legal, legality of, but King K. Rule was kind of a door being opened that said, hey, the potential is here. So, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, that's exciting. I'm glad you brought that up. I, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode of Trollcast. We do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, there's a couple things you can do to help us out. Number one, if you're watching on YouTube, you can, you're already at TrollGames.com. Uh, and you can like this video. You can share this video with your friends. And you can leave a comment and let us know what you thought about the topics we talked about. Are you going to be playing Red Dead this weekend? Are you going to tune into our Red Dead live stream? Uh, do you think Banjo is really coming to Smash? Uh, and so many more things. Uh, but you can let us know there. If you're a podcast listener, you can leave us a review on iTunes. We really appreciate that. That helps us uh, helps the podcast become visible and findable for other people. Um, you can also um, follow, uh, join our Discord, which you can find in the description of this podcast. Um, and you can do a couple things there. You can write into us in our podcast section. Uh, you can write in your news stories, uh, topics you'd like to hear us talk about, uh, anything else you'd like us to talk about on the podcast. You can also email us at chortlecast at gmail.com with those same things. Uh, and then, of course, you can follow us on our social media, uh, at Chortle Games on Twitter and at Chortle Games on Facebook. So we've got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and we're going to have a lot of more stuff going on. We This is not the only thing we do. The podcast is not the only thing we do. Uh, we have content six days a week. Very long schedule. Uh, the podcast goes live at 12 o'clock Central Time every Friday. Uh, right before that, uh, Steven does this thing where he finds Zer in Destiny 2 and sees what he's mm-hmm. selling. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and she tells you where to find him and all that good stuff. So that went live right before this podcast. So if you're a Destiny 2 player, you can go check that out. And uh, be sure to tune into that next week when we do that as well. Um, we're doing two live streams every Friday. We do two live streams every Friday, two live streams every Saturday. This Friday, uh, we're going to be playing 
uh, My Heroes One Justice, which is the My Hero Academia fighting game. I wish uh, I could be there for that. I know. Um, I, well, I wish you... Uh, I've got it. There is online play. At some point, we could potentially do a live stream where we just play that. Uh, I would like together. that. I'll probably get it around Black Friday, but we will be playing it more on the channel later on. Jake's yeah. just going to do the first. And I won't be here on Friday, except for during Zer. Right. And but um, that was my whole deal when I bought it. I was like, Steven, if I buy this, we've got to we've got to do some stuff with it. So we w we will do stuff with it. I love MHA too much to not get the first video game that came that's, here. <laughs> that's my whole deal as well. So yeah. uh, anyway, I'm going to be playing that. I'm going to be playing that first. I'm going to be playing it a little bit earlier than we would normally live stream. Normally, we live stream pretty late on a Friday. I'm probably going to start like right at five with that one. Uh, maybe even sooner than that, like closer to four. Uh, so if you're a sub, be sure to ding that bell so you know when we're going live or follow our Discord. We usually post there or on any of our social media. Uh, and then following that, I'm going to be streaming uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm not going to be doing anything story-related. I'm going to pick a direction, and we're going to just ride a horse uh, that way, and uh, we're just going to have fun in the world. Um, uh, I'm not going to try Kinda to do like anything. Kind of like what I did with Spider-Man the first night it came out. Exactly. Yeah. Um that said, we still may run into some side missions, so maybe there will be a side mission spoiler, you know, whatever. Uh, if you're being a purist and don't want to see anything about the game, I understand that as well. But if you want to see the world but still don't want to be spoiled on the story, uh, come watch the live stream tomorrow or tonight, uh, and we'll uh, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. We'll have a good time. Uh, we'll go see those uh, horse testicles in action and maybe catch I was going to mention them. I'm glad you did. Uh, I saw someone post on Twitter today that was like, I can't wait till Friday when I can jump on a horse, I can head towards the snow and watch those horse testicles shrink. Yep. And I was just like, yes, that's what we're doing. Uh, anyway, we'll be doing some fun stuff like that. Uh, Saturday, we're doing a super split stream Saturday. We're going to be playing uh, Friday the 13th and Killing Floor 2 uh, with our friend channel, Friendly Fire Games. We might, depending on how many people they have for Killing Floor 2, we might bring Jeremy from Maybe Gamesters as well. That's right. We It may be a real super split stream Saturday. Yes. Um, and then, of course, we'll have uh, the rest of our week of content. On Monday, we will have a Let's Play of Red Dead Redemption 2. That will be me playing through the first hour to an hour and a half of the game. Uh, it'll be edited down like we always do a Let's Play. Excuse me. It'll be edited down like we always do a Let's Play. So it'll only be about 10 minutes, but it'll be my whole first experience. So um, that will probably have some spoiler st st story spoilers. Uh, but, of course, it's the first hour, so it's not going to be anything too crazy. Um, and then on Tuesday, we do a little thing called Team Up Tuesday. It's where Steven <laughs> and I play, or, and, and whoever else on the channel can participate, uh, play a co-op game. We've been doing a lot of Destiny. Uh, I think we're probably still doing Destiny Tuesday. We, uh, we might... Try, correct me if I'm wrong, we might try to do something a little more spook-themed since that's the day before Halloween because I don't know what we'll be doing for Halloween. We may look into that. But anyway, okay. uh, that's where we do co-op games. On Wednesday, uh, we'll have another Let's Play. I'm gonna, It's me and Steven playing uh, through this VR game called Where They Lie. It's kind of a <laughs> spooky uh, VR game. Uh, it's very interesting. It's pretty funny because Steven's camera didn't work, so I'm having to type out all of Steven's words. Uh, which just ends up being kind of funny in and of itself. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I get terrified very easily. There's several times where I'm just scared by my own shadow, so it's a lot of fun. You're going to want to watch it. It's going to be a great way to end our Halloween spooky season. Um, yes. On Thursday, Stephen does a... Uh, Stephen will be back playing Phantom Doctrine. Phantom Doctrine will be back. Phantom Doctrine returns. The Chortle Can't Agents wait. Intelligence Agency is back, baby. Um so that's where the Thursday is where Steven plays through a, a, a let's a live stream series uh, right now. Or he was playing through uh, Phantom Doctrine before Halloween came. Uh, over Halloween, he's been playing the Metro series. Now we're going to be back to some Phantom Doctrine until February, probably, where Steven will jump back into Metro. Uh, yep. <laughs> unless you beat Phantom Doctrine before then, that may God. Let's too. hope I beat it before then. <laughs> I hope so. Too. Surely, surely, uh, surely. Anyway, and then of course. Uh, that next Friday we'll have another podcast, another Zer stream, two live streams on Friday night, and two live streams on Saturday night. So, um, man, I think you're forgetting. I think you're forgetting what's happening next weekend. Oh my gosh! Yes, next weekend. Yeah. Uh, next Saturday. It's, it's soon. Is yeah, it's extra right here. Life, uh, extra life live stream. Uh, that's game day. 
That's where all your favorite streamers, uh, anybody who participates, is going to be streaming for 24 hours. Uh, and we are participating this year. We're super excited about it. Um, this is something we decided we wanted to do earlier in the year um, and have been kind of working towards that. And we're now in the we're, – we're, we're probably later in the game than we should be on planning. Uh, we've had a couple things planned out, but now that we're like here, it's kind of like rushed to get everything done. But we yep. are going to be streaming for 24 hours on November 3rd. That's next Saturday. Uh, literally from 12 a.m. to 12 a.m., just about. Uh, we're going to be streaming. Uh, we'll have short breaks just to switch some cables around, to switch to a different system, mm-hmm. uh, to play other games. But we're going to have a lot going on. So it's going to be great. Um, but the whole reason we're doing this is, like I said, it's for charity. It's for Extra Life. Um, we're supporting one of our local children's hospitals uh, called Blair E. Batson. Um, we're going to be talking more about what they do during the live stream. Uh, it's going to be a lot of cool. We're going to hear some stories about some kids um, who whose lives have been changed and saved through there. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. But any donations that happen during that stream are going to that. We have a special Extra Life link where you can donate to our, uh, our uh, drive or, I don't know, our part of the, the thing. Uh, yeah. Our goal right now is very modest. It's $500 um, that we're trying to raise. I would love to bump that to a thousand or even higher, yep. um, but this is our first year. We don't really know what to expect, so we're, we've got a real modest uh, number. Uh, and at that point, you know, any any amount helps. A uh, dollar or two, um, if you can, is going to do great. Uh, but what I would really encourage everyone, especially anybody who is a, a part of Chill Games and is, is a sub, uh, is to share the stream like crazy. Uh, share mm-hmm. it on your personal social media. Just share it across with your friends. Uh, share it with you know maybe some adults you know just kind of saying hey these people are 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 supporting a children's hospital um, come check them out support if you can um, so just really encourage you to share it around and try to get the word out so that we can get some donations in and help these kids so yeah and we have a Definitely. special non gaming segment that we're working on Steven's currently working on it because he's going to host it's, it it's it's my project so we'll see <laughs> it. Even if it fails horribly, it should be entertaining to watch. So <laughs> it'll be a um, nice break from frying our brains for staring at a TV. <laughs> exactly, it'll be a nice break from from some, yep. some video games. But anyway, it's going to be fun. It's going to be for a good cause. So definitely come and check that out. But anyway, yeah. and that's it. That's it for this week, man. Stephen, we do a lot. That's a mouthful. We do. Oh, that's a big mouthful. But anyway, thank you, Stephen, for watch, uh, joining me. As always, like I said at the top, I'm glad we can always make this happen. Uh, it's good to just talk about all the stuff that's exciting happening around. It's a good time to be alive. It's a good time to be alive. It is. I'm going to go eat some New York pizza, and I will see all of you I'm, folks later. I am going to go get ready to stand in line to pick up Red Dead Redemption so I cannot play it for two days. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably worse. That's probably worse. Well, I don't know. I've had yeah. it pre-downloaded for a while, so it's been staring me in the face. But anyway. Shut up. Shut up. You're right next to New York. Shut up. <laughs> hey, everybody. Go play Red Dead Redemption. We'll see you tonight playing Red Dead Redemption. And until then, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.